So here we are in part four, and this time I'm going to get into the nitty gritty of how you send the how you send the MIDI data and how you can manipulate what MIDI data you send. Um, because not all synths and effects units and things um, are just going to accept, you know, uh, MIDI CCs or MIDI SysXs of values of 0 to 127. That's kind of the exception. You're usually going to have to get more complicated than that. So here, I've, here we are. I've got one modulator here. It's a standard uh, UI slider. Um, it is going from a minimum value of 0 to 127. So I think I already explained that if that's not the range you want, you can change it here. You can change the values that it sends. Now, uh, in the MIDI section, I've got it to send MIDI continuous controllers and controller number one. So if we if we manipulate it and then we look at the MIDI monitor, we can see we're sending MIDI continuous controller messages B0, controller number one, and there's the data there going out 1E, 1F on the last, which is a hexadecimal conversion of that decimal number there. So what happens if we need an offset on it? Sometimes you'll find that um, you need to off offset or what data that you receive and what data you send by a certain number. In the modulator section here, it says expression to evaluate when calculating the MIDI message value from the modulator value. So if we need to add one on, we just put a plus one there on the modulator value. And then very important, you must press this thing here to compile the expression. And then you get this little message of saying expression is valid. That's OK. Now what happens is that every time we send a modulator value, so that's 42, the actual hexadecimal MIDI message that gets sent, you see the last one there was 2B, that will be one more than 42. So if we look at the calculator and we put in 42, that should have sent 2A. But what it actually said was 2B. So you can see we've added 1 to our modulator value, and then we've sent it. So that can be quite useful. If, we, if you need to put an offset in to what you send, you can do it there. And likewise, on the way back, you can um, take any offsets off if you need to. If, when it, if the data passes back into this modulator, which you, we, haven't we haven't done yet, we're all about sending data here. But when you get data back in, sometimes you might want to change to take the offset off it. So you can do it, you do it here on this particular section there. Now let's move on to uh, constructing SysX data. Remember in part two, I put in a fake system X message here. We'll just make one up again with random codes. And I put a couple of lowercase X's in just before the end message. So now it's going to send this system X string every time we move this modulator. And it's going to put the value of the modulator, convert it into hexadecimal, and put it in here where we've put the two lowercase X's. OK. Uh, I've already done that in part two, so I won't do that again. And now I'm going to move on to slightly more complicated construction of System X. Quite often in the System X, what you also need to send is the MIDI channel number. And the way you insert that is instead of using the X's for the data, is you use a Y for the MIDI channel. So we put a one in front of it because that's the usual format. And then the, the Y is the MIDI channel number. So if MIDI channel of the panel is one, that means when we move this, what we send is a 10 here, one and a zero, the zero being the MIDI channel, or MIDI channel one. You start in zero in the hexadecimal. So if we change the panel's um, MIDI channel to 16 and move it, 
then you can see that that has now changed to a 1F. So MIDI channels 1 to 16 are represented by a 0 to F, like that. And that's the usual format that I've found. I mean, you need to check your MIDI specification because your device might be different, but that's, that's the way I found it usually works if you need to insert the MIDI channel in the data. Okay, let's go back. Right, so up till now we've been sending our MIDI data as in this section here, in this slot here with two lower X's. So we can go from 0, 0 to 7F basically with this system. But what if your device wants it as a most significant bit and a least significant bit? In other words, not it wants the data to be not in one byte here, but in two bytes. Um, how do we send that? And what we do then is instead of using X and X, we use MS and LS, or the other way around. It depends. You'll have to look at the MIDI specification of your device. That will put the most significant bit in there and the least significant bit in there. Now, in this case, the lowercase or uppercase matters. If we use the lowercase here, MS and LS, I'll show you what it does. Go back to the panel. Move it to send some data. Let's have a look at what it sent. You'll see there's always a leading zero on the two data bytes at the, at the end. 0205 at the end there. That's because it's only using the, in this format with the lowercase, it's only using the last four bits in the byte. But if we change that to capitals, like this, and try that again, you should see now um, that it doesn't. You can see it uses all of it. And because the least significant bits were the last one, the most significant byte here is always zero because we are we weren't going high enough, basically, to use that. We were presenting all the data in the lowest significant bits here. Again, it might be the wrong, the other, other way around in your MIDI for specification. That's when you need to read you need to read your MIDI implementation notes and understand it for your device. And that's half the battle in this really, is to read those and understand them. So that's how we do that. Let's go back again. Um, and the last thing that I know, I mean, none of this stuff is documented. And a lot of this stuff found out from trial and error or from trawling the forum, the controller forums. So there's probably a lot more in here that I don't know. Um, one last thing I know that we can do is we can we can insert a checksum. If you put in something like Z5 before the last F7, if your device needs a checksum at the end of it, this will do a checksum on the five bytes before it, I think. And I think it might be the Roland way of doing it. So let's move it and let's have a quick look. And you can see that 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 is that last byte in there before the F7 is changing with every every value, because basically it's before performing a checksum on the five bytes that come before it. That is the way that I understand that it works. Um, I I'm a bit sketchy on that one to be honest, because a lot of this is not documented. Not something that I've needed to use, but I've seen other people with Roland gear. They do have to use that. Um, so that is how you construct the SysX like that. Um, if it needs to be more complicated than that, then you're going to need to use Lua scripts. And that gets into a whole another world, which I might lead on to late in later tutorials. But um, at the moment, we'll leave it right there.